Hey guys, this is Blizz from Compute Hustle. Today we'll be talking about how to install Hadoop and use HDFS to store your files and whatnot. And set us up for our next video where we talk about how to write our own MapReduce code and compile it and do all sorts of stuff with it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm gonna open up a tutorial actually that goes over this pretty well. And it's written by a guy called Jaden Chua, and it's from 2018. But I'm really going to go over this, but I'm also going to be adding my own little commentary and what's worked out for me when I was installing this, as well as trying to explain whatever aspects I can about Hadoop. So to go ahead and start, let's go over this. So there's three modes, standalone, pseudo, distributed. So actually, we're only going to be needing standalone because we just want to be able to compile our Hadoop code, our MapReduce code locally. And since we're not in any kind of production environment, we're not really going to need distributed mode. But it is really interesting to learn about, and it could be a cool side project. So I recommend doing that on your own time. But today, we're just going to go through these steps. So setting up SSH on Mac OS. So if you open up the terminal, right, you should be able to do SSH localhost. And you should see that there's a new prompt opening up. And when you try to do log out, it should, you should see that properly. Um, also, you shouldn't get any errors and whatnot. And it also tells you that if you fail in this, you should enable um, SSH for all users. So go ahead and open up System Preferences and head over to Sharing. And you're going to want to make sure for Remote Login, you have it set to all users. Originally, it was set for me to only these users, but you want to make sure it's on all users for this case. So after you do that, um, you're going to want to go ahead and check again according to this guy's tutorial. And you can also run this command to make sure remote login is working. So do sudo system setup, get remote login to your password. And for me, it says on. And you can also try this command uh, if you get an off. So now you have to generate SSH keys. And there's actually a step in here which he doesn't mention, which is you have to make sure that you're uh, password prompt is empty so later on when when Hadoop tries to enter as root it doesn't need to enter a password so let me just show you guys what happens when you enter this um, command and since I've already uh, you want to make sure that you leave the file name empty and I've already got one that exists but I'm going to overwrite it and make sure for this enter passphrase you leave it empty twice and there's some sort of RSA thing here, which I'm going to make sure to blur out, but I'm going to command K this. And then what you need to do is cat tilde dot SSH slash ID RSA dot pub. And then these two greater than, these two greater than signs, sorry, is basically appending to this authorized key file. So if you already, um, if you by accident, um, I guess, I guess you wouldn't want to override it, but let's say that you only want to have one key in there. You could just use one one greater than sign, and it would overwrite what you have in there. So actually, I'm going to just overwrite what I have in there by using one one greater than sign. And I'm not going to actually cat it because I'm not sure what kind of uh, vulnerabilities there are with me catting my authorized keys. But uh, other than that, cat is basically just what you do to um, print out what's inside a file. And the two greater than signs are basically for piping those uh, the text into a different file. And that's pretty much that with um, this, this command. So after that, it says you have to install Java, which is obvious since that's, um, that's uh, fundamental to Hadoop. Um, but I found that this brew cask install Java 8 does not work anymore. So I recommend just installing the latest version of Java you have. Maybe I I'm working on Java 11. So if I do Java dash version, I have Java 11 here. And my friend who was also doing this had Java 10 installed on his computer and his Hadoop, his HDFS ran just fine. So I recommend just installing a, a greater version than Java 8 on your computer and that should work out fine. And then next you're supposed to install Hadoop using brew, which is just uh, a download and install. But I've already got this installed. So if I do brew uh, list, um, as you can see, I already have Hadoop installed, and I'm actually just going to check my version in here. I was doing this earlier, so that's why I have a control F. So I'm going to do brew list versions Hadoop, 
And I have, I'm pretty sure I have the latest version of it, which is 3.2.1 underscore one. So that's like pretty much the latest that there is right now. And that's what I'm testing on. Uh, I think my, I think my computer is a, uh, yeah, I'm on Catalina. So in case you're wondering what, what, uh, I'm on, I'm on the latest update. So, uh, well, as of this recording. So basically that's that's that. You make sure you have it installed. And now there's four configuration files that you're, well, he says you need to go through. I actually find that um, you can skip this first step for Hadoop Env uh, and specifying Hadoop Ops. But let's just go ahead and take a look at these files. So navigate to user local ops slash Hadoop. And actually when, um, I don't know if it's because of the changes in the latest Hadoop, but you actually don't find these files in there. So in, when I find I need an IV, I need to go to libexec, and then inside libexec, I go into et cetera, and then I go into Hadoop. So uh, that's uh, libexec slash et cetera slash Hadoop to get all these files. And I'm not exactly sure. Oh, currently it's working for me, so something must be going right. But please fact check me if I'm wrong on that regard. But anyways, you can see that we have our main files in here, our Hadoop env, our core site XML, our MapReduce uh, site.xml, and we have our HDFS site.xml. So what it says here first is to change or export Hadoop ops. So let's just go and navigate to that. So nano. Um, uh, what is it? Hadoop env dot sh. So these are basically just the environment variables, actually. So in case you're wondering what the env stands for, and it's about the th around the third paragraph or something like that, or a couple paragraphs down to find the Hadoop ops uh, option. Here it is. So it's right beneath the Hadoop JAS debug option, and Basically, what this guy wants you to do is to specify the JDK version to what you currently have. But I actually found that when I didn't specify this, my Hadoop still ran fine. So go ahead and experiment. Just you can go ahead and try leaving it unset as you start, and maybe debug later on. But I find a lot of these options on macOS are already preset for you, so you might not actually have to worry about that. But in case you do need to change it, uh, here it is. Um, other than that, let's go on to the next configuration. So in your core site.xml, there's a bunch of settings that are, uh, I guess, core to HDFS that you can set things like IO and things like that. But let's go ahead and nano our core site XML. And as you can see, I already went through this tutorial before. So I've copy and pasted this exactly word for word into my core site.xml. And let's just take a look at what's going on here. First, it's setting the name for our temp directories directory. <laughs> and it has a small description. And on top of this, uh, it basically gives a host address and port number for our HDFS to use. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty, pretty short and pretty much the basics. Um, for our map red site.xml, we're going to have to, well, apparently you're supposed to do this, but I actually just, I think when I was doing this, I didn't have a, I'm not sure if I have a map red site, but I think you just add the following in there since I don't think anything else is in there. Let me just double check my map red site.xml. Okay, sorry. There is some stuff in here, but I'm pretty sure that most of it is just comments. Uh, well, actually, to be fair, there's a, um, there, there is this template header for the code. But I've literally just copy and pasted straight really in here. And basically we have this job tracker running on the, the address localhost 8021. And that's pretty much it for the for this map red site XML configuration. And then finally we have this last configuration for HDFS for our Hadoop file system. So nano HDFS site XML. And as you can see in here, I've also copy and pasted this code. Basically, you have a replication factor for HDFS, 
which basically means uh, replication is basically when you copy everything from one computer to another and you maintain that on a frequent basis. So if I make a change to one computer, um, another computer should be ready to go with the same exact storage file format, history, everything, etc., etc. Since we're only running this locally, we only have one replication factor. So that should be self-explanatory. And that's it. That's about it for configuration. And then there's this last command called um, that wants us to navigate to slash op slash do. So let's just go ahead and just do this name node format. Just I guess to show you guys what what happens. Um, and yeah. So I'm I'm actually not exactly too sure. Okay, I guess it's just self-explanatory, just formatting HDFS. Let's just keep moving on. I'll link you guys the documentation to figure that out yourselves. So let's go ahead and go to slash user slash local slash opt slash Hadoop slash bin. Uh, spoiler, I already showed you guys it works, but when you do start.dfs.sh, um, this is what it looks like. Um, it starts name nodes, starts data nodes. Actually, I, the reason why I told you guys you need to go through this little part where you, um, basically where you, when you do the key gen, you have to make sure your passwords are empty. And the reason for that is, well, I'm not sure exactly, it's kind of pseudoscience, but I'm assuming that when HDFS starts its services and it can't um, start anything, because it can't find, it can't start as root or whatnot, I'm assuming it's because it doesn't have password access. So I was getting errors earlier and I just wanted to let you guys know that that's how I fixed it. So with that, we've started our HDFS service. Let's go ahead and show you guys one of the commands. So do HDFS DFS slash LS. And you can ignore this warning if you get it. Um, and I don't know, I guess, I have nothing in there, so let's try a different thing. Let's um let's create a text let's create a text file. So let me go to back to our desktop and let me navigate to the compute hustle directory, my video playground, and let's just create a file called sample.txt. And let's uh let's add some stuff to this text file. So blah 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 and stop it at that. I forgot to mention when you, when you guys we had left off and um, we we got this error where there's no such file when we just try to do ls. But I forgot to tell you guys you have to make a directory. So do make directory slash user. Uh, we're basically we're just making a home directory and then do slash user slash. So now um, I'm actually in. Uh, directory where I have two files I can put into our um, and you can also check if your data node your name node everything is running by doing JPS and as, as you can see my data node is running whereas before I was I was getting an error JPS did not show me a data node so I'm going to do DFS put sample.txt and hopefully this works All right, so now let's do dfs-ls. And there you go. As you can see, we have our sample.txt. And I forget, is it dash cat sample.txt? I'm not sure if this will work. Uh, yeah, and see, we can even print out what's inside of our HDFS file system and do everything else that we would want from inside of there. And with that, I think I'm going to put this tutorial to rest. Um, uh, you go ahead and do dot slash stop all dot sh. And that should be it for this video. I'm just gonna wait as I, as I basically shut down all these services. So see, it's stopping the name nodes, stopping the data nodes. Stopping the name nodes, the secondary name nodes specifically, and then it's going to stop all the node managers and everything for yarn that we did not discuss in this video, but it's going to close anyway. And then we do PS aux again, grab Hadoop, and it should not be there, and it's not. All right. All right, guys, I am kind of tired because I ended up having to fix that bug, 
but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please comment below if you had any of the errors that I ended up having uh, and I'll try to help you guys out. So that's enough for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.